So here we are again. We are. We'll be driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you've probably seen this week, we've led up to it with a guess the car. If you're a car geek, you know. But I want specifics. So, if you've written down what it is, you need to be exact. Because it matters. But if I invite my glamorous assistant in to help us reveal Ta-da! GTR, bro! Specifically? R34 B Spec 2. So they did V1, V2, N1 and N2, which was the Nismo editions, wasn't it? No spec. Yeah. Carl's gonna get all geeky in the background. So, if it was Bayside Blue, it'd be the Holy Grail. So these are skyrocketing in value, like going crazy. When a 25 year market hits in America, so these aren't allowed to go to America, the 34s. Um, when a 25 year market opens, so that means then once it's 25 years old, it's classed as a classic and it can go in, you're gonna see half million pound GTR 34s. You're gonna see them. What did, um, my guy in Australia sold his for that was three years ago, 150. What's the highest we've seen so far? 225? Yeah, well into the 200s. Yeah. They're, just, <clears throat> they're just gonna keep going up. So. You're talking quarter of a million quid for a Datsun. <gasps> what did I say? You said it. I know. I think what we need to make quite clear is we're all fans of Japanese cars. Uh, yeah, Hondas suck, this rules. <laughs> Carl's nodding his head, he's not happy. Um, yeah, and I think, what, if you're right now between the age of 30 and 50, you know why this is iconic. Yeah. Because of the films that came out around them. It's, well, it's the films, the games, it's everything, it, isn't it? it, 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 it yeah, it's the it PlayStation a, generation uh, car. Yeah, to be fair, it was, wasn't it? It was Gran Turismo. Yeah. And it just, so you, you've got late, what, mid 90s, late 90s, you had the first Gran Turismo come out on PlayStation. Um, nothing like this had ever been seen. So this has got RB26, manual gearbox, four wheel drive, four wheel steer. This had computer graphics center display for your control and torque control and G meter and it, not even the supercars had that stuff. So ahead of its time. Yeah, well, it was the PlayStation car, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what the that's what it got kind of nicknamed. Um, yeah, this is pretty special. Um, having this here or working on this scares me more than I think pretty much anything else we work on, because you you do not know how original and how rare this is, like. The guy who owns this is as nuts as we are. So he, if parts come up from Nissan, he buys them. So in the boot, there's a brand new set of calipers that cost him more than my first house deposit. <laughs> because that's how much the, this is. I can't think of another car that's grown in value in the last 10 years this much. Maybe F40. F40 took a, has taken big jumps. Yep. 360 Challenge Stradale has not jumped up that much. He's gone from 25. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Like, they've gone up 10 times. Even yeah. F40s have only gone up from a couple hundred to a million. Yeah, and you like, say that. Percentage wise, nothing yeah. is done. Uh, but it's, and again, you talk about cars, all right, maybe you find a car that has jumped that value. It's a supercar. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. You know, it started off, at, I mean, it's a Nissan, <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? And these are single-handedly dragging the Japanese market through the roof. So 3000 GTOs, Mitsubishi V6, uh, four wheel drive, twin turbos. Like back in the day, my friend had one. It was mental and I want one. I'm not paying 15 grand for a rock box. 
Like, because they're rotten. But that's what they are now, because if you, people who can't get these want to get in a Japanese market, I mean, what are, can you find EG Civics? We were looking, weren't we? Because I had one of those. Like, your dad's, what's your dad got? He's got a 33. GTST. Auto. Oh, it's an auto, yeah. It's, it's clean, but he paid three grand for it probably 10 years ago. Probably worth 20. 20, 25 now. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> Yeah. Look at it. From every angle, that's a weapon. I mean, come on. That is the factory wrapping on the sills. The blue plastic, that is the factory wrapping on the sills. Factory fresh, and it still smells. Mate, it's got that tell me about Japanese it. car smell, you know, it's... Like, we joked earlier, We, if you've seen it, then we, we've done a video on an LP550, and we joked that was rarer than unicorn tears. Yeah. If that's unicorn tears, what the hell is one of these? Camphide bonnet. So this is now where you start getting into the V2s. So when you get into the Vs and the Ns, the NERS, where the special stuff came. So carbon bonnet, you had a trick front diffuser, you had, it's got a carbon rear diffuser. It's obviously RB26, so twin turbo, individual throttle bodies. I mean, look at it. Look, this, honestly, being near, the, near this thing or working on this thing terrifies me. I reckon you've got more chance of running to the moon than you have of finding another one like this. Oh, oh, honest to God. It does look pristine. Yeah. There's one local, but it is not this, it is not this level. This is another level. This drove out of the factory and just got mothballed. I mean, look at it. You, if you can get on that car and find dirt or a mark or something wrong, then I don't know what to say. The thing is lush. So what, what are you guys going to be doing with this? Uh, so it's about to go in back into storage. So we're just going to give it a little bit of a check over, uh, go through it front to back, make yep. sure it's happy. Um, when it first came in the country, we'd done belt and braces. So we, hey, we'd done the belts, um, uh, all the fluids. So we obviously had a line in the sand for what was done from when it was imported. Um, so yeah, we just, Every year it gets rolled out, covered, trailered, brought down, checked over. So if this is a UK car, we'd be talking even more oh, of a mate, yeah. next level, let's be honest. Did they even do them as full UKs? Yeah. They did. They did. Middlehurst Nissan. Right. Brought them in, but they're super rare. They were the only Nissan dealer that were allowed to bring them in. Look at it. Something else. And there's something refreshing about seeing it's factory fresh, it's stock yeah. as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you're a kid, all you want to do is dick around with your car. Yeah. So, you know, you bolted everything you could to it. Whereas now, I don't know whether you're the same, especially when you start getting stuff like this, or yeah. factory is like, you know, we, and we do a lot of work with customers as well, don't we? To put cars back, not like that, but to get them close, don't we? Like wheel change wrong connectors or bolts that have started to corrode and so it, well, do, you, you know. do you remember the uh, the sumo car so andy barnes yeah you know that was the one we used to see that at santa pod and 10 of the best going against people like simon norris in the short wheelbase evo going against the roger clark cars in the early days um you know some, they were all big power japanese cars yeah, yeah yeah that was the first car that blew Sumo Power 34, the first car I ever saw run a 10 second quarter. Was it? And it blew my mind at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now, like a 10 second quarter. Yeah, like, <laughs> we build cars yeah. dropping eights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing that in a, a tune RS3. But you say, you, so what, would that, what power would that sumo car be? It was a thousand horsepower. Was it? Everyone lost it their mind. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, it, that was a massive thing at the time. So we had that on the cover of Redline a couple of times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now, yeah, we do thousand horsepower stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. like it's it well, look, road cars. <laughs> yeah. Look at the new nine nine two Turbo S. What's that come out with? Nearly seven hundred horsepower. It, the numbers now are just moving on and moving yeah. on. But yeah, I mean, this is just this is too special not to show everyone. Really, um, the guy who owns it is a car nut. He likes his cars. He and he knows what he's got which is a nice thing as well. So like I said, all right, we, we sort of joke that he's gone out and bought brand new calipers for it, but they're 
not their proper do you know what i mean because i suppose really it is an investment if you wanted to go out and buy a 50 60 grand 34 gtr you could do that and you could bash it around and you could not be so protective of it but this this is something special this is something special this is almost 400r kind of territory isn't it for how how rare and how good a condition it is yeah, you yeah. know if you've got 400 what was it what did harlow add it up for 1.6 million mm. for a 400r and this is in better condition than that 400 hours i would say so yeah this come from harlow isn't it? yeah yeah originally this is harlow car the only 34 that's probably better is a z tune if you can find one yeah i mean that's it though isn't it because it's most spec yeah but there literally you can't find them anywhere no brett brett was a brett was an n2 wasn't it mm -hmm. the white one which is a nurbo ring edition wasn't it that the n yeah but very nice i know cool bro Sorry. i almost had you go on and another one what net what else uh uh, it doesn't matter whether you win by an inch or a mile. Oh, uh, what's, uh, what's the geeky lad say? The bit that always makes me laugh in, a f in that film is the drag race when he races a jet jetter at the end and he's got no front brakes on it. Yeah. <laughs> Piston rings you fried. <laughs> the floor <laughs> fell off. Uh, the mad scientist he called him, wasn't it? Uh, so anyway, what's the retail on one of those? <laughs> There we go! Mate, how good were they when they come out? Yeah. Well, how old was I? What did they come out? In 2000, 2001? Mate, these were 50 grand brand new. A UK spec. They were 50 grand new, weren't they? Oh, look yeah. at you with your retail figure. I was planning to buy one. Ferrari. This was my dream car. I'll like, yeah. get older, I'll buy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'd have to sell my house. <laughs> go on now, what was a Ferrari you pulled up next to? It was a 355. Yeah. Yeah. Which is now worth a lot less than this. It is. <laughs> well, and it wasn't this it he was put up to. Right? It was yeah. a Supra, 2GZ <laughs> Supra. We do a lot of varied stuff, I yeah. think. And we, it's normally stuff tied in with clients we look after. Um, I've got an Evo coming in in a couple of weeks. We've got Yaris coming in, haven't we, for some work. A GR, a GUR. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, we like cars, so we pretty much work on anything it's just whether you want us to so that's the that's the thing and not people people who own stuff like that who have know that our expertise you, you know we're not going to do a they don't have cam belts today well yeah you're not going to do a cam belt on a 15 year old civic here are you really no one's going to want us to do that but you know stuff like this where they know our background and they know the levels we work to lorry um, but this is this, regardless of what, what we do to this, or this just has to be seen. It's that, it's like a museum piece, really. This is lush. Cool. It, it, it scared the living part of me driving it, though. Yeah. You'd never do, and that's the problem now. You'd never, like I say, I'd love a 360 Challenge Ferrari. That's probably my favourite Ferrari because I'm never going to have an F40. I'd never drive it. I'd literally, I'd let it idle in a corner, rev it a couple of times, and go, right, can't take that out. I don't know. That's the problem. The Jap stuff was always affordable. Yeah. Big power. You can yeah. It. Now you can't afford it. You to can start. buy two Lamborghinis for less than what than what you can buy this. Like what? It's, right. I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna sell my GTR and I can buy. Being realistic, you could go and get a 488 for this. Yeah. If you if you had to get this out of the owner's hands, you're talking. I reckon you're talking Coro. You you've got to be in the twos. Yeah. Realistically, you're yeah, talking in so, the twos, yeah. isn't you? Given the condition of it. On what it is, how rare it is. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, yeah, you go on eBay and you'll find a Bayside Blue one for, what, 50, 60 grand? Yeah. If this was Bayside Blue, mate, this would be worth, like... Mm. And I have no idea why, because why the, that colours... It was just the colour, wasn't it, that everyone knew them as. But... So, if you own a Jap car, and it's a nice one, don't sell it. Yeah. It's like Cozzy's. RS 500s now, 100 to 150 grand. Some, somebody put up a, um, I mean, lots of different sort of owners groups on social media, and they put up a picture of a, an auto trader yeah. from 2003. No, I think 2005. And they'd got SAF Cozzy's for three grand, 
They've got three... Take it off my drive and I'll give you a hand job and a packet of Harry Bow. Seriously, there's a, th- a three door on there for four. And who got the price of those now? Mate. You know? What you used to get out of three ads? There was a Saxo. Yeah, Saxos yeah. were more than a Mark 1 Escort. Yeah, yeah. It's not... not anymore, they ain't. <laughs> Irish rally, or rally, rally heritage Mark 1 Escorts now were like yeah. big, big dollar. Especially when you start getting the Irish, Irish cars coming in because they're all forest cars. Forest spec Mark II. Yeah, you're talking easily six figures. My dad tells me about all the Mark one and Mark II that he scrapped when he was younger. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were just weren't worth anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right, isn't it? Yeah, like, I mean, the, but you just, like, people just don't know what's going to happen, do you? I had, I had a client, a friend, he had an M3 CSL and he sold that for 15 grand. And it's worth nearly an E46 M3 CSL. And I always, he was a financial advisor, I used to wind him up all the time. <laughs> so I was like, mate, that is the worst financial decision you've ever made. What are they now, 80 to 100? They're insane, yeah. Yeah, carbon roof, you know, the lot, they had everything. But you don't know at the time, you don't know. Who they, the hell is gonna go out, buy a car today, go, that's gonna be worth some money in a few well, years. This is it, you see. Put it in the garage yeah. and never touch it. If we were a crystal, a crystal ball, you know, we'd, we'd go, right, we'll tuck that one away. Love it. Right, on that note then. Yeah, tuck it back up. Let's, uh, a quick think of a line, think of a line, think of a line, think of a line. <laughs> I got nothing. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Hang on, there it is. <laughs> I live my life a quarter mile at a time. That's it! <laughs>